Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered together for worship today. This truly is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I certainly welcome all of you who have come and gathered with us for worship, both here in the sanctuary as well as those who are joining us online. What a great gift it is that together we might have opportunity to truly create a community of faith that gathers to lift our hearts and minds and voices in praise to God today. You probably noticed when you came in, and many of you have taken advantage of the new CDC guidelines, which place us in the medium or yellow area for community spread of COVID-19. And the decision the session had made at that point was to make uh, masks once again optional for us here in the sanctuary. So we want to encourage those of you who feel still safe to wear your masks to please continue to do so. We continue to have the side pews marked every other row as well. But those of you who feel safe not wearing your mask, we want to encourage and welcome that together this morning as well. Certainly a, a great gift that we might have opportunity to be gathered together in this place and in this way. Uh, just one sort of caveat to that is that all of the adults who are working with children five years old and younger, uh, we are still requiring masks, uh, recognizing that that's an extra level of safety and precaution we can take with them. So, um, so just a note for that as well. We particularly want to extend a warm word of welcome to all those who are guests and visiting with us today. It is truly a joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. I hope if you are looking for a church home that you find unity to be a place of worship and service that God might be calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you could speak with me or someone sitting near you so that we can answer any questions or follow up on any requests that you might have. I do hope that you will find this to be a place that you might see God at work in the ways that are of most help for you so that you might grow and that you might serve as well. We are celebrating communion this morning. Uh, we are using those pre-filled cups uh, once again today. If you didn't pick one of those up, I know there were a lot of things to pick up in the narthex. If you didn't pick one up, be sure to spend a moment to go and grab a cup uh, for you today uh, that you might be a part of celebrating communion. In the bulletin, you'll find many opportunities to serve and to grow in your faith and certainly some celebrations that are coming as well. Hope that you've signed up already for Go Make a Difference Day of Service, which will be the morning of Saturday, March the 26th. Uh, you can do that online. Uh, you can do that here at the church as well. In the kiosk, those new round circular things that are in the narthex, there's one of them marked uh, serve or mission, and there's a flyer in there that you can find out more information about all of the projects. If you're going to be participating in that day, or perhaps if you can't participate in that day, there's also information in the bulletin about how to donate various items that we'll be using or, or providing as, um, as gifts on that day for our community. So there's ways to participate in that way as well. Today's peanut butter and jelly Sunday, a day we collect items for the Fort Mill Care Center. And also we've had to schedule another CPR class for April because the class that we scheduled in March was full. We had too many people who wanted to be a part of uh, updating their CPR training. And so we scheduled an additional class in April. I draw your attention there. Today is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. It's also the first Sunday in our stewardship season. Our theme this year, love in truth and action. Stewardship packets are available in the hallway. Um, they're alphabetized there. I want to encourage you to go and pick yours up before you go home today. That way we don't have to mail it to you. That's another good stewardship uh, item for us. Um, it, we do, um, in a different change today, or this year from previous years, we will be mailing uh, stewardship packets to all of the children and youth so they can be on the lookout for those. Those will be mailed early next week um, and want them to have a special packet that was just for them. So that'll be coming to them early next week. They'll also find um, information about uh, Lenten devotionals. Uh, this week is the last week to sign up if you want to raise a caterpillar uh, into a butterfly for Easter Sunday. Um, understand we've had to up our initial order of caterpillars because so many of you would like to do that. And so if you have not yet signed up for your caterpillar, this is the week. The deadline is Thursday to do that. Um, you'll see that uh, Vacation Bible School registration opens tomorrow, so uh, draw your attention to that for families. We also are still looking for those who might be able to help and to be a part of making that such a great week as well. 
In terms of celebration, I think it's still mostly a surprise that we are celebrating um, Angie Benjamin's 30 years of service with us um, in the church nursery. Uh, you'll find ways that you can contribute and be a part of that celebration. My friends, God is doing so many amazing, wonderful things. What a joy it is that we might be able to be gathered and worship today. Please stand with me as we lift our voices in our responsive call to worship. Remember the story of our faith. We are the people God has delivered. Rejoice in the hope of our faith. God goes with us step by step. Cling to the promise of our faith. Our God will not abandon us. Let us worship God. Thank mm -hmm. be seated. To confess to God is to do something holy, opening ourselves up to the light and healing of the divine. So trusting in God's grace and mercy, let us admit the truth of our lives, first together and then silently. Let us pray. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another that we have sinned against you by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not fully loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not always had in us the mind of Christ. You alone know how often we have grieved you by wasting your gifts, by wandering from your ways. Forgive us, we pray, most merciful Father, and free us from our sin. Renew in us the grace and strength of your Holy Spirit, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Walking this earth, facing temptation, defeating sin. Jesus has done this for us, what we can never do for ourselves. This is good news. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading for today is Psalm 91, verses 1, 2, and then continuing with verses 9 through 16. Let us hear this word of Lord, of God. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. No scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite any children who are present here with us to come forward if you'd like and join me here on the steps and the carpet for a special word. Good morning. 
It's good to see you all. First, I just want to thank you for being here. Every time you come here, you make worship more wonderful and more complete just by being you. So thank you. My name is Molly. We may not have met before. I'm pretty new here. I'm one of the new pastors here at your church, and I can't wait to get to know each of you. So I thought we'd spend a little bit of time sharing about each other this morning. First, I think names are really important. And I want to learn all of your names and all of their names. So on the count of three, I want you to say your name really clearly at me so I can learn everyone's names. Ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Got it. We're good. Might have to ask you one or two more times, but I'm gonna learn them because I love names. So I wanna share a little bit about me this morning because we're gonna be learning together and we're gonna be growing together. So first, I want you to raise your hand. Do you all live with your family members? Yeah? So do I. I live with my husband, Luke, and my daughter, Kylie, you do too. Good, good. We love our families, right? So another question, do you all live with any pets? Raise your hand if you live with any pets. Awesome. I do too. I have a dog and his name is Porthos. That's one of the three musketeers. And do you all, raise your hand if you like to read. Anybody like to read? I love books with great stories and beautiful pictures. That's awesome. So we have that in common. I also like to play outside and to take big walks and just to be with friends. And so I hope that we can do that together as we get to know each other. So I have a question for you all that I want you to share if you feel welcome to do that. I'm still learning about this church. I'm still getting lost when I walk around in the hallways and that's okay, I'll learn. But I wanted to hear from you all, what's something that you really like about coming to church. What do you like about coming here? It can be anything. What do you all like? Children in worship. I have heard such great things about children in worship. That is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. The worship bags. Those are wonderful. That's right. Yes, what else? Playing with the blocks. Yeah, they have wonderful toys here for all of us. I'm so thankful for that. Anything else? Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. I am learning more about you all every day, and so this is so helpful. Will you all pray with me? Please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for new friends and new beginnings. Help us to learn about you as we grow together, we grow together and, love and love one another, like you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
As I mentioned during the announcements today, this is the first Sunday of our stewardship emphasis. It is always also the first Sunday of the season of Lent. And our theme this year for both is love in truth and action. This theme is drawn from a verse in the third chapter of the first letter of John. So I decided that for the month of March, I would preach from 1 John. And today we're beginning at the beginning, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. If you are familiar with the beginning of the Gospel of John, you'll hear some echoes in these opening verses of the letter. Throughout this letter, we will find an urgency expressed to those who are believers in Jesus Christ, as well as to those who are potentially falling away. But let us hear this word of God to us today. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Thus begins the story of There and Back Again by J.R.R. Tolkien. And yet the hobbit in question, one Bilbo Baggins, never intended to go there or anywhere, for hobbits do not like adventure. At least not until the wizard Gandalf appeared one morning on his doorstep. Flustered by his encounter with the great wizard, Bilbo invited Gandalf to return the next day for tea. He did not realize that Gandalf would invite 13 dwarves to also descend upon Bilbo's hobbit hole. But late in the evening, after the rush of food and drink and serving and cleaning, Bilbo finally finds himself sitting on a stool when the dwarves produced instruments and began to play. The music began all at once so sudden and sweet that Bilbo forgot everything else. He was swept into dark lands under strange moons, far over the water and very far from his hobbit hole under the hill. And suddenly first one and then another began to sing as they played deep-throated singing of the dwarves in the deep places of their ancient homes. And as they sang, the hobbit fell in, felt the love of beautiful things made by hand and by cunning and by magic moving through him, a fierce and jealous love, the desire of the heart of the dwarves. Then something woke up inside him, and he wished to go and see the great mountains and hear the pine trees and the waterfalls and explore the caves and wear a sword instead of a walking stick. The next morning, when this band of dwarves began their journey to their ancestral home, despite some deep reservations, Bilbo Baggins ran from his hobbit hole under the hill and joined them. Yes, as Tolkien begins his story, there was something about the words, the music, the song that changed Bilbo's life. 
It drew him to a vision of what life could be beyond the Shire. It joined him to a new community, a new fellowship, we might even say, that would share great adventures in the days to come. In the opening verses of the first letter of John, I think we find a similar life-transforming word to be shared. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we've seen it and can testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and has been revealed to us. Yes, this is life as it was intended to be, as it was meant to be, the fullness of life, a vibrant and engaging life, a life that death tried to corrupt and kill, but it could not, because this life overcame death itself. This is the declaration of eternal life, not just a future, but a vision for here and now that changes everything, that is taken on human form and bursts into the present in Jesus Christ. This life draws us into the very heart of God. My friends, this is good news. This is good news indeed. Sharing this new life is what this letter is all about. Scholar N.T. Wright reflects those who have seen this life, who've been captured by its beauty and promise, find that they have come to belong to a new kind of family, a fellowship, we sometimes say. The word he uses at this point, Wright says, seems to mean stretching the word to fit the new reality, as early Christians often had to do. That there is a kind of life, a quality of life, which is God's very own life, in which God is now sharing with people who have heard and seen the life come to life called Jesus. Yes, the intention, the point of this entire letter is so that those who hear this good news, who read this good news, who believe this good news of the life come to life called Jesus might come to share in fellowship. That they, just like Bilbo Baggins and those dwarves, might become a part of a fellowship that travels together in this world and in the world to come. Now, this fellowship that we are invited to join and share has, is both vertical and horizontal. On the vertical side, we're welcomed into the very life of God. God is relational. We know that in the doctrine of the Trinity, right? One God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is a fellowship, an eternal life, a vibrant and engaging life of God within God's very self. And as we'll hear later in this letter, the best way to describe this relationship within God's very self is love. And even more, through the Holy Spirit, this love of God overflows into the world. That love overflowing in Jesus Christ is what the church has seen and handled and known. Can you see how radical a claim this really is? That we might know the eternal life and love of God here and now. And we're not done yet. Because this eternal life, this life transforming fellowship here and now also has that horizontal component too. Those who have heard and believed are invited into a fellowship with one another. Again, think of Bilbo Baggins running to join that band of dwarves for an adventure. This world, this new world, these people, this adventure, this life, this community that we know as the church is not intrinsic to us. No, it's foreign and strange and yet enticing 
and life-altering. We are drawn into deep and personal relationships with strangers and with friends, with family and neighbors. We discover that somehow we are more ourselves when we are together than we could ever be alone. Because this life to which we have been invited is to a community that nourishes and challenges and strengthens and blesses us. Do you have a sense of what I'm talking about here? Maybe we could put it this way. How many times in your life have you said, after coming home from worship on Sunday, it just makes things better to go to church? When you say something like that, I suspect you are not really talking about the sermon. You're probably not even talking about the music and the prayers. No, in this way we find difficult to put into words, something happens to us while we're here, while we are gathered in fellowship with one another. Yes, something has been given to us. Maybe we just might call it love. It's at least part of why the last two years have been so hard. Scholar Alan Culpepper once wrote, where fellowship is only partial, joy can never be complete. Remember, that's the point of this letter, so that we might have fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, and with one another. In that fellowship, our joy may be complete. When God's people are in fellowship with one another, God is in their midst, and joy becomes complete no matter what our circumstances might be. My friends, this is the gift that we've been given here at Unity Presbyterian Church. Like Bilbo Baggins, it feels to me at least like we are at the moment of new beginnings in our fellowship with God and with one another. New things are breaking forth. New people are joining us and old friends are returning. The Ash Wednesday service this week was almost uncomfortably full in the historic sanctuary. There is energy and new life and new hope every time we gather together, every time we find ourselves in fellowship, every time we share God's love with our neighbors in need. So what do we do with a moment like this? Do we just consume it, expecting someone else to provide it to us whenever it's convenient to us and for our children? Or do we care for it? Do we embrace it? Do we participate in it? Do we love it? How do we care for this great and amazing gift that we've received? How do we respond to the love that has been shared with us and has drawn us into this fellowship with one another? How do we put that love into action for the generations that will follow us? For this ancient, life-transforming story has been shared with us. And now it's our turn to pick up that treasure, to care for it, to prepare it for the glorious future that is to come. It's time for love in truth and in action. As Christian writer Bob Goff has said, every day God invites us on an adventure. It's not a trip where he sends us a rigid itinerary. He simply invites us. God asks what it is that he's made us to love, what it is that captures our attention, what feeds our deep, indescribable need of our souls to experience the richness of the world God made. And then leaning over us, God whispers, Let's go do that together. Yes, my friends, let's go do that together. 
I declare to you these things so that you might have fellowship with God in Jesus Christ our Lord and in fellowship with one another. I declare these things to you so that you might be swept up in a great adventure as you awaken to a life that really is life. I declare these things to you so that our joy may be complete. The gift is in your hands. May it awaken something within you. Because on the adventure with this fellowship, I can promise you that you and your life will never be the same. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, you speak to us, you come to us, you call us to be in fellowship with you and with one another. Assure us of your word. Help us to treasure it to treasure this gift that you have given, to embrace it, to care for it, that it might transform our lives and the lives of others and those who will follow us. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mark, do you want to do the trumpet? Yeah. Friends, one of the ways that we respond to the good news of God's love made known to us in Jesus Christ is together, as the fellowship of Christ, say what it is we believe. And so let us now, with one voice, stand and use our affirmation of faith that is found in your bulletin. Church, what is it that we believe? This, this is, is the, the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we have been saved, if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses, we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Please be seated. Throughout our stewardship season this year, we are inviting various members and families of our congregation to come and share with us a little bit about their own stewardship story. We've decided to try something new this year to try to make this a little more of a conversation style as opposed to just speeches to you. So I'd like to invite the um, members of the Rogers and Chamberlain family to come up that we might have a chance to talk a little about stewardship with you this morning. For those who might not know, just go ahead and introduce yourselves to us and tell us a little about how long you've been here as a part of uh, Unity. Well, thank you, Matt. We certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning with our family and talk about stewardship. My name is Dan Rogers, and I'm joined here today by my wife and a few here, Cecilia. And I'm also joined by our daughter, Angela Chamberlain, and our son-in-law, Ned Chamberlain, and our fabulous grandson, Jackson. Now, unfortunately, um, our beautiful granddaughter, Caroline, is out of town today with some of her classmates, so she couldn't join us. But I certainly wanted to uh, take the opportunity today to make sure that uh, we could come as a family and talk about stewardship. I know I feel like I've been extremely blessed and that our family has been extremely blessed being members of Unity. Um, we joined Unity, Cecilia and I, in the early 1980s, and we were very fortunate to join Unity because it was a tremendous experience to watch our daughter grow in her faith uh, for the early years and Unity. And then it was even more wonderful when both Angela and Ned decided to continue here at Unity because we were doubly blessed. We had the opportunity then to watch Jackson and Caroline 
grow in their faith in the wonderful programs that we all support here in the youth programs and in the children's programs. So yes, we're very thankful of everything that Unity has provided to us as a family. Very good. So um, Angela, share with us a little about uh, sort of who influenced your, your understandings of stewardship and generosity. Yeah, um, I think it's just all the people I've had been growing up with, um, starting from youth group and everything when I was young with Bob Lane, and I have some of probably my fondest childhood memories. And now as I've grown up um, is people like Danny Vaughn, who if you don't know who Danny is, she is amazing. And she always has so much love and she's just always so excited. And I think she knows directly how to impact and get the kids excited, which is soda and snacks. And um, it's people like Ronnie Dunn who are here every single day, but it's all of you. And I think that's what inspires me to want to do more and want to have that community that we have here at Unity. Very good, thank you. Uh, Ned, have you tried to share sort of what you've learned about stewardship with, uh, with your family and with others? Yeah, I think one of the things I've always enjoyed is all the opportunities to serve in in the church or outside the church at, you know with the youth and and as a family um you need to always done a, such a great job of including the youth whether it's dimes for hunger or go mad day and um you know i've really enjoyed like doing the confirmation class sponsorships over the years and seeing especially like james here is now like way taller than me but, <laughs> um i feel short but um <laughs> And, uh, you know, really enjoyed, like, you know, sometimes when we do family promise, we'd have, like, kids stay with us overnight or help with the meals. So it's just a really, you know, like you said, the fellowship and the, the family atmosphere. It's really been, really been blessed, blessed with that. Excellent. Very good. Jackson, tell us a little bit about what kind of things you've learned over the years. I would definitely say I'm just so thankful for the opportunities that Unity has had for me growing up through Unity. I mean, when I was young, I did acolyting and nursery, and now that I feel like I have grown up and got older, I've had the opportunity to do things like Family Promise or even the Good Mad Day. And I've had such a positive influence on me as well. My granddad is an elder, and he does so much work with the Columbarium, which he's always included me with, and I feel so grateful that I can do that. And my dad is a deacon, and he always is just having such a great positive influence on my life. And I'm really grateful for the unity, the community, and the support system that I have in, all these amazing friends I've made, especially with the youth group. Excellent, very good. Dan, other things you'd like to share with us about stewardship today? Sure, again, as I said earlier, um, I've been primarily influenced by how blessed I've been and how blessed we have been as a family and how grateful we've been to be members of unity. And I just wanted uh, each of you, as you uh, think about your time and talent pledges this year, that hopefully you'll be prayerful and let the Holy Spirit guide you on where you can help the church because this church has so much opportunity to do so much for so many people. And I've been amazed at the work not only in uh, the youth and in the children's ministry, but in so many of the other ministry teams that I've been involved in. And I've been so impressed with the wonderful volunteers we have. And I know that each of you have talents. Many of you have many more talents than I do. And so there's a bound to be a way that you can find where you're interested and where you're talented and where you can help out. And I'd be more than glad to uh, let you know about opportunities that come up all the time here for additional volunteer work at the church. And not only in the church, but also the work that our outreach and mission team does in support to the local community charities and charities and mission work in the world. So again, uh, please see me if you need any other information. And again, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you all so much. What a great gift to share Thank with you. us your story. And God's gifts, amazing, uh, God's amazing gifts continue to shower down upon us. We recognize just a, a bit of uh, our story, I think, as we hear the story of others uh, shared with us as a part of this stewardship season together. We do respond in the giving of our time and our talents and our financial resources as well. If you're here with us here in the sanctuary, perhaps you'll do drop your financial gifts in the uh, offering plates in the narthex, or maybe you're using the online Give Now button, or maybe you're using the mail. But all of these are ways in which we join our efforts together with what God is doing in this place. And what a great and amazing gift that we might have opportunity to do so.
My friends, I'm not sure there is much to say beyond what we just heard. The Lord has prepared a place for you. Hear the whisper of your name as we seek to encounter him here at this table he has prepared for us. Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. You are our God and we are the creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth breathed into us the breath of life, and set us in your world to love and serve you. When we rejected your love and ignored your wisdom, you did not reject us. You loved us still and called us to turn again to you in truth and in love. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Out of your great love for the world, you sent Jesus among us to set us free from the tyranny of evil. He lived as one of us, sharing our joys and sorrows. By his dying and rising, he releases us from bondage to sin and frees us from the dominion of death. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break, the cup we bless, may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By, you, by your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and draw us into fellowship with one another, that we may be one in ministry in every place, Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit to put our love in action, living as you require by doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with you, our God. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Siblings in Christ, on the night that Jesus was arrested, he was in an upper room gathered with his friends. And after dinner, he took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the bread of life. Let us eat and remember together. In the same way, after supper, our Lord also took the cup. Once again, giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord saving death and his resurrection to new life until he comes. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us celebrate together this joyful feast. Friends, this is the cup of salvation, 
All of you drink of it. The peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth from this place in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, as we go forth from this place, as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. May we join this amazing adventure that God has called us to join as we are in fellowship with God and with one another. And may we live this life of love in truth and action. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.